Hello everyone and welcome to Crypto Atlas. This is a daily update video on AMC and we got some really interesting things to share with you today. So don't go anywhere. I'm going to make this a short, quick video for you. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up like button and share this video on social media with other people. Hopefully we can get more people aware of what it is that's going on and let us know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Please keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. Everything I'm sharing is my own opinion. It's my own research, and I highly encourage you guys to do your own research. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on on the daily. For the daily, AMC went up 7.69%. We started to see some dropped action going on with GameStop. It took a little bit of a hit today, and then it started to show some strong signs of recovery. So AMC did end up recovering back in the end for overall in the day, which is nice because the last four days, all we've been seeing is red, and it's been looking very bloody, and a lot of people are calling shenanigans. There's content creators that are out there. There's media outlets that are out there that are all basically saying like oh hey look here's the reality check like amc is now going back to fundamentals and it's just this big huge fud guys the driving narrative is still the same the shorts have not covered they have to pay up and until they do so this thing is not out of the game and one of the things is that the lower the price goes when they do decide to finally start covering it's going to be easier for them because they're going to have to pay out less so for them, the hedge funds, the market makers, anyone that has these short positions, their big objective goal is to get the price down as low as possible. And ultimately, their goal is to just straight up bankrupt AMC. Now, a lot of people might make the argument, why are they putting so much time and effort specifically into AMC? I think people are just blowing this out of proportion and they're making this, this big conspiracy on things. What you need to understand is that there are billions of dollars that are at stake at this now point in time behind the specific stock because of these extensions that are taking place with these short positions. And by doing so, when they have to buy these shares back, it's already been shown that the AMC community owns over 80% of at least 80% of all the shares of the free float. That is a lot. That means that there's not a lot of shares that they actually have access to be able to buy, which means the price is going to go absolutely parabolic. But that's just factoring in what the real shares are. Of all the other data that we're seeing, data that's being pulled from the dark pool, we're seeing things that are going on with the ETFs, with these convertible bonds. I mean, there's so much different data out there that if you really start diving into this more, you'll start to understand the bigger picture. And it's pretty darn scary. We know that the stock market is manipulated, guys, but there's a lot of stuff that's going on that people just don't really realize. Like, for example, there's actually rule regulations that are currently set in place for reporting purposes regarding shorts in which they don't have to, and it's actually being encouraged not to report their short positions. They have to report other data, but all of this public information of knowing what they're doing for their shorting we don't actually get that information because it's being disclosed in the rules that it's not being encouraged to actually write it down. That's a rule that needs to change. That's a big problem. And so these companies, if they can get a company to go bankrupt, like AMC, where they have short positions, those shares that they borrowed, they never have to pay back because the company doesn't exist anymore. So they get away with it of making whatever profits that they had on that way down. And the further that they can kick that ball down the road, if people start to get impatient, which that's what they're banking on. They're hoping that we're all gonna give up on this, then they're going to end up winning. But the thing is, we own most of the free flow and new data just came out today, which is really, really important. And everyone that was fighting in the last couple of days because people are getting upset that the price keeps dropping, people feel like you know we're losing the game, everything we're fighting for, it's a rigged system and it's never gonna work in our favor and they're gonna end up pulling this off, that kind of thing. People get those things running through their heads. Guys, the game is not over. In fact, new players are coming into the game who are favoring on our side. New rules and regulations are progressively coming in. Don't forget about that. There are steps that are being taken, but this is a marathon, not a race. And so what we're seeing right here is we have our rise after hours 
at almost 10%. In fact, at one point I saw over 10%. We're at $38.45. So a really strong rally taking place overall for the day. The question is, how is this going to play out for tomorrow, which is a Friday? And a lot of times we do see a little bit of sell-off because people want to have that extra money for the weekend to go off and do their little things. And people don't know how the market's going to open on Monday. And there's a lot of different uncertainties with that. But we're seeing volume finally starting to kick back up, which is absolutely amazing. Really like to see that taking place. Uh, another form of concern that I do have from a technical analysis standpoint is we technically have three days now that are all below this key level of support line. All right. So by doing so with that, it typically suggests that there's a further continuation. I don't know if we're going to see another pullback tomorrow for Friday. I think it's a little bit more probable than not. I don't know if it's going to be a slight pullback. But I would be leaning more towards the likelihood, especially with all the shenanigans that are going on, that we see some degree of pullback. But I'm hopeful. Again, it's all about probability. So I'm just slightly more probable it's going to pull back. But I'm hopeful that everything that happened today and in the after hours will cause that fire, burning it so that we have the news and information that's actually superseding that of what's going on from the technical analysis side. And that's going to help drive the narrative for our recovery, pushing this back up. So take a look at this, guys. The shares available to borrow continues to go down. It's at a quarter of a million now, 250000 For calls in the money expiring on July 16th, we currently have 58311 Now, with this big price drop that's been taking place, I wouldn't be surprised if we have new call options that are moving around with their price action positions and people entering into those, meaning that we have even more increasing for this Friday. We'll have to see how that continues to play out for tomorrow but hey if this does have a best case scenario and we go full on parabolic tomorrow we might even be setting ourselves up for a gamma squeeze taking a look at the stock grid and what's going on in the dark pool positions guys we got 234 million shares being over in the dark pool for volume for the day it was almost 200 million so check out this information here from tony kim i think this is really cool he says, he's a financial analyst. Anyone who calls you an idiot is only speaking from ego. I would have been guilty of that four months ago, but I did my own research out of pure curiosity. It's incredible how simple the thesis is. I would appreciate your take on this. As of June 2nd, the CEO confirms 80% retail flow ownership, followed by unprecedented international FOMO buying, especially out of Germany, South Korea, and Canada, plus Delta hedging on in-the-money call options, 28% institutional flow ownership per la uh, latest Fintel estimates from 13F filings, notable ads, plus 6.5 million shares at July 9th, State Street, and it's got a lot more information here. Large institutional equity funds have underweight restrictions for any given security as their returns are often benchmarked to an index. ETF buys and sell only as the fund nav changes. If the sideways trading last month is indicative of anything, shares have been proportionally changing hands from the fearful to the diehard holders. Established shorts interest is 16% of float. That's 124% of the float. 124% making it more than what exists based strictly on reported figures, not accounting for any speculation regarding naked short selling and ETF creation slash redemption arbitrage, much better short squeeze conditions compared to Volkswagen. It's simple float math. And if you guys missed my videos the last two days, I did the comparison between AMC and Volkswagen guys. And guess what? We saw the bounce take place and it was at that percentage level of what we saw with Volkswagen when Volkswagen ended up doing its big, huge squeeze. And going on with this, this is what's so huge. New failure to, to, new failure to deliver data was released today from the SEC. From June 18th to the 30th, the end of the reported data, there were over 33 million failure to delivers. Want to know why we never got above $65? The answer is crime. I mean, we've really seen a lot of struggle with the $60 range consistently there, but uh, $65 was another objective goal we were trying to push over. So this is just absolutely insane, guys. Uh, this guy right here, he said, I pulled the AMC failure to deliver data into Excel. In yellow are the five days of failure to delivers, which then put AMC on the thresholds list. So look at this. It went from quantity for the three days prior of about 41,000, 21,000, 15,000, to all of a sudden, it's over two and a half 
or two and a quarter million, right? And then we're seeing four million, three point six million, three point seven million, three point eight million, four point four million. This is absolutely insane, guys. This is the kind of stuff where people were saying, oh, the naked shorting and all this other stuff. That doesn't really make any sense. Look at the data. Look at what's actually being analyzed, the things that are being reported. 124% of the float. Get out of here with this stuff. I don't care who these people are that say, oh, AMC should only be worth $5, $10, should be worth a penny. I mean, if you see people in the comments telling you that you should be selling this and you should be going off and buying other things, it's not their money. All right, you want to support a cause, you want to support something, that's fine. But you want to agree, you want to sit there and agree that the system is corrupt, but you don't want to participate in actually changing it, making the steps collectively together so that we can fix these problems. Well, then you're just as much as part of the problem, and I don't trust those kinds of people. And there are social influencers that are out there that do those kinds of things. Just like, for example, I saw a video, and I'm sure a lot of you guys may have seen that video too. I don't know how many views I'm going to get on this video, um, but I saw a guy yesterday who was trashing another AMC YouTuber, and you could tell that this guy that was trashing him really didn't do his proper research, and I highly encourage you guys to do your research. I'll finish off by saying this, and I should have mentioned this a little bit earlier. What are the failure to delivers? If you don't know what that is in finance, a failure to deliver, also FTD, is the inability of a party to deliver a tradable asset or meet a contractual obligation. A typical example is the failure to deliver shares as part of a short transaction. The buyer must deliver the cash and the seller the stock. So again, just kind of going back to this again, look at this. We have millions of these failure to delivers. These people were supposed to get margin called. They had a contractual obligation and they didn't fill out their contract. How can this be legal? How can they get away with this? This is like saying you and me are going to file our capital gains taxes, except we're not going to go ahead and pay that right now. What is going to happen with that? The IRS would come after you. So these major companies and individuals that are doing this, we're talking major, major money, and it's messing up with all the regular retailers. And that's what the SEC says that they're trying to do is they're trying to support the average retailer with all this. Well, you know what? Actions speak louder than words. You're going to do it. Start taking these actions. Start changing these new rules. Implement it so that the short positions actually have to be reported appropriately so that we get full transparency with these things. Look into the hedge funds. Look at what's going on with the dark pool. Or better yet, why don't you shut the whole dark pool down so that we have some equality with these things? I mean, there's so many different things that are going on in the market that's just absolutely insane. I'm going to go and wrap up the video there. Video ended up being a little bit longer than what I expected. This stuff gets me heated. This is transparency. You want to know what's going on with the market? There's the data. Guys, I got referral links in the description. So if you want to, feel free to check those out. You can get free cryptocurrencies, free stocks. It's free money. It takes you a minute to see which ones maybe you're already a part of. And if you want to join those, get some free money, feel free. Uh, let us know in the comments how you guys feel about everything with this. If you're new, please don't forget to hit subscribe. Hit the like button. And feel free to share the video. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next episode.